What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for joining me. I hope you like what you see. Please check out any of my other movie reviews as well as any of the short films that I've created over the years, over time. I love to create short films. I write them, film them, star in them most of the time. And that's what I do on my channel. So if this is your first time here, again, thank you. Leave a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that notification button for updates. And if this is not your first time here, as always, thank you for joining me once again and listening to my videos. I do appreciate it. can never stop saying I do appreciate it. It means a lot. And, you know, it's just something that I like to do. And to know that I get any views or any comments really does push me forward just to continue to put out more of the same content that I've been doing pretty much as far as movie reviews and just making short films. And, uh, yeah, let's just get straight to it. This is the Ant-Man and Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania spoiler review i'll keep it short and quick i really enjoy the film my favorite well, not my favorite i love atman one but my second next to atman one would be atman and the wasp quantumania behind that would be atman and the wasp the second film out of the three films um, i really enjoyed quantumania a lot of people that i've seen on tiktok or even just you know reading reviews don't like the film they say it lacks character development, which I think it has character development. I don't know how much more character development you want from these characters that we've gotten already from multiple films, um, especially from Ant-Man. And we still get more character development from him as well as Janet, Hank. Uh, the daughter I really didn't care for, played by Catherine Newton. I just wasn't invested. I wasn't into the act, you know, the choice of acting from the actor herself, the actress herself, and, you know, she was probably my, probably my least, or not even probably, my least favorite character of the film, I need to see more from her, I know she's been in other things, like, I think Freaky was one film where she gets, like, her body gets, she changed her body with some killer, is it Freaky? I know she's in Detective Pikachu, I really didn't care for her in Detective Pikachu, but yeah, you know, I just need to see more from her, but that's not to like crap on her. I just I just didn't like I just didn't care for her, the character and I guess certain choices within, you know, emotions that should have I, I felt should have been conveyed more. But you know, that's enough of that as far as characters. The only thing I think the only person that I think needed more development, because there's not much for her to do other than assist, is Hope Van Dyne played by Evangeline Lilly. I feel like she doesn't really get much she's integral to the films at least the first the second film in Quantumania but I, I still feel like she's missing a lot more that she can do I, I feel like she just needs a whole section in the film that's really focused on her I don't know because she's in a title The Wasp you know Ant-Man and The Wasp and I just it doesn't really feel like a, a The Wasp movie that she's also part of it it's just an Ant-Man film that's how I see it but, you know, I, I would like to see more from her. I think she would want her own film. Honestly, I don't think it's necessary unless you're going to do a TV show based on her character. But again, I think that's not necessary. Uh, I, but, you know, I think she needed more as far as any of the characters. I would have wanted more for her to do. You know, Jonathan uh, Majors, who plays Kang, the villain. Awesome actor, one of my favorites right now. He's, you know... He's top notch, and I really enjoyed his role as Kang. And even He Who Remains, he was in Loki season one. I'm sure he's going to be in season two and more films based off of the character Kang, who has many variants. If you've seen the film, you saw the end credits, how there's just so many of him. Of course, they're all different in their ways, but I don't think he's dead in Quantumania. I'm pretty sure something happens to him. He's gone into that other realm, and I'm sure he'll come back bigger and badder than you know what we got in Quantumania which he still kicked ass but he is limited in the quantum realm he doesn't have everything that he normally would have had he would not been in the quantum realm and destroyed of course like he said in the film and if you've read the comics he's forced to be reckoned with he's killed many Avengers many heroes but you know I'm really looking forward to more from Jonathan Majors as Kang and I know more is coming out but I really enjoyed the film more than I thought I would. I didn't think I'd care for the quantum realm, but I did enjoy it. Now, it was your typical, we have a tyrant and we need to, you know, we want to 
not rebel, but fight against him. There's a, a freedom, or what you want to call it, like Star Wars. People compare the film to Star Wars. Uh, you have the the rebels, the alliance and whatnot, trying to fight against the Empire. So it's pretty much that type of film. You have Kang, and you know his. He's pretty much runs things, and he has an army. And then you have this rebel group, or the, rebel is not the term that I want to use because I'm pretty sure they were there before he even when he crashed. You know, he got exiled there. He wasn't even a thing. But I guess freedom fighters or whatever you want to call them. But you know, it's it's one of those typical films. Other than Ant Man and his, you know, the family trying to escape from the quantum realm, find a way, and then they run into Kang who. It's just, you know, causing problems for Ant-Man and his daughter. And, you know, he's saying he's going to help give him back time. But it's really probably not the case. And he's lying to him. And he's just, you know, he's a tyrant. He's killed Avengers. He's even told Ant-Man, are you, are you Thor, the one with the hammer? Have I killed you before? And it's like, he's just a force to be reckoned with. And people are saying this film was more of a setup just for Kang. And an add-on to what's to come, and not just an Ant-Man film. And I just agree with that. I think it does that, but I believe it's still an Ant-Man film. Uh, it was fun. People could talk about the comedy that it wasn't there, like the other films. And I'm, I found myself laughing at times. I thought the comedy was there. Uh, of course, we have serious elements within the film, which wasn't that bad, and especially in the third film of a trilogy. The third film is always going to be more serious. I don't understand people. You know, they talk about the writing was here and there, which I understand. But isn't that the case with most movies? That is, you know, characters are separate. It's going to be here and there. You know, everyone's you know a critic now that they feel like they know how to write a script. That's how I get from the negative reviews. And I'm not saying that their reviews aren't warranted, but I just feel like they they really got at At Man and the Wasp Quantumania in a way that. You wouldn't have gotten you. Have, you wouldn't have done that with any other movie within the MCU. You know what I mean? I I, I don't. Know, I guess I'm a little not to sound confused, but I just felt like people were just picking on things, and I don't know if maybe it's a trend because you know how trends are, and everyone's gonna feel a type of way. But I just feel like they were nitpicking on things, and it's like it's a film. It's what it's always been as an MCU film. Now I get it hasn't always been the best lately. And I like most of the films from Phase 4 other than The Eternals I didn't really care for and Thor Love and Thunder. But, you know, it still hits. It still does its thing. What it's trying to do, it's a it's universe that is growing and it's being established, you know, going forward of what's to come. And it's like you want it to be its own thing, but these films will never be their own thing. There's still going to be elements of something that's to come. But even then, I still felt like it was its own thing. You know, they're trapped in the quantum realm and trying to escape and... They see this. They meet this villain who's a force to be reckoned with. The next you know, Donald level threat, Donald's level threat. I said Donald, the Donald's level threat. So I don't know. I I really enjoyed it a lot, and I I did get some videos that I've seen. I did see some videos on TikTok that they do like the movie and they're like, what are people talking about? And I I really don't know. I think it is a better film than most people have been talking about it as far as the negative reviews but there are people that do like the film and agree with what i've been saying and it's it's fun and it kind of sucks that it's not really hitting as i thought it would especially after thor 4 which was to me trash i didn't like it and i'm a big marvel guy mcu guy but i can admit there are misses and Ant man and the wasp quantumania isn't a miss i really don't think that's a problem the film is much of a problem uh, Modoc, you know he looked a little weird but I didn't expect him to look any better than what we got now he was a combination of George Tarleton character who was the actual Modoc in the comics and Darren Cross Yellow Jacket from the first film they combined both characters to make him Modoc and I actually didn't mind it. I didn't. I enjoyed it. And if they would have probably kept him in the helmet and not showed his face, I wouldn't have cared. Because at the end of the day, it's not really the Modoc from the comics. People would have probably preferred the helmet on better. Even though some people were like, ah, he doesn't wear a face mask. Who cares? It's the MCU. It's the film version. And I'm pretty sure he would have been more tolerated had he had the mask on. And there would have been negative reviews. But it is what it is. We got it. And whoever thought we'd have a Modoc character on screen you know the character of Modoc on screen 
So I thought it was cool, and I liked the what the twist they did with it, making him Darren Cross. You know, when he went to the Quantum Realm from the first movie, which was pretty much what I thought was going to happen. I had an idea. I wasn't sure, but I've kind of been hitting the notes of I knew Kane was going to come from Endgame when Tony Stark made the Mobius strip time travel. I, I called it, and then when that happened to Darren Cross at the end of Atman, he was shrinking and stuff, and his head was last. I was like, are they going to do something with him, like Modoc? It just, because, you know, you see a big head and arm shrinking. That's the first person that I thought of in the Marvel Universe, so... I don't know. I, I really enjoyed him. I thought he was cool. But, I don't know. I really enjoyed the film, and I, I don't understand the hate that it's getting. And if you're... If you've been watching other films, but you're, like, hesitant to watch it, I say, go ahead and watch it. I recommend it. I give it two thumbs up. I really enjoyed it a lot. That's all I gotta say for that. So, that's my review. And thank you for joining me. Let me know what you think. If you've seen it, what were misses for you, what were hits for you, and would you want an Ant-Man 4 or just another, a separate movie where Ant-Man is a part of it and you don't care for a part 4. Let me know what you think in the comments. I will get back to you. And I appreciate it as always. Thank you again. Until next time. Later.